Welcome back to TGTV and more specifically ladies and gentlemen welcome back to a very sunny day and my filthy Range Rover. Today ladies and gentlemen I'm here at, you'll probably recognise where I am, a familiar location. Today I am at Paddle Up HQ, Paddle Up Rooms up there because today I'm here to drive something very special and something I may well have a flutter on. This is a car that will actually fit into my garage very, very well. So I'm excited. Have a little look and have a drive. It is a very, very special car indeed. I just want to have a little stroll around first. We're gonna have a little sneak around inside Paddle Up HQ very quickly. I think the last time you saw me here was when I was collecting my 997 GT3 RS. Very exciting collection day, but today I am back with a much fuller area here full of cars here at Paddle Up HQ. There are rooms upstairs but there are meetings going on so I won't run in there with my vlogging camera. I'm just going to have a little sniff around here. Oh my god. Right, so some of you recognise this 599 Aperta. Unbelievable piece of kit. There is the LFA here as well. And a lot of you telling me in my 997 GT3 RS collection video that I should have bought one of these instead of a Carrera GT. This is a car that I'd buy as well as a Carrera GT, not instead of. But that is unreal. I'm going to have to do it at some point, aren't I? Before they go to the moon. We've got Gen 1 Aventador, the best looking Aventador. No arguments there, it is the best looking Aventador there is. Gen 1 bog standard Aventador, lovely stuff. And we've actually got this, this Lusso here is a 70th anniversary special edition. There are 90,000 pounds worth of options on this system. I don't know whether or not this is now live to bid on by the time this video goes out, but make sure you hit the website anyway to go and see whether it is or isn't. But you can tell it's the 70th anniversary because there's a little 70 down here. But it's got black roof, painted from factory, and loads of other options. Carbon absolutely everywhere for that is stunning, sat on trickle charge there. Punchy interior as well, very, very cool piece of kit. And there's loads of nice little details all over it. I do like a Lusso. We're not here to see this Lusso though. We are here to see something outside. We've got Pista Pilotti, as you do, and a couple of Ferrari racing cars. You've got 430 Challenge, and you've got 458 Challenge, and you've obviously got this F40 as well. There is a video of me giving it 1010 in this F40 on my channel, so make sure you go and check that out. That video didn't actually do as many views as I thought it would. I don't know if it didn't get into the algo, but that video is on the channel, so make sure you go and check that out. Lots of lovely F40 noises and me scaring the life out of myself. Now, all very well and good. Before we head outside then, I'm just gonna do a wrist check. I get asked a whole time, what am I wearing on my videos? So this is a Patek 5524 white gold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Calatrava Pilot. It's a recent addition. I've just put it on this rubber strap as well. You can see there. Cheapy rubber strap. It's about $7.99 off eBay. But that is what is on the wrist today. For those wondering, I always forget to do that because I forget that most of you are watch fans as well as car fans. So today, we are here to drive this. This little thing here. However, the guys here knew I was coming and they thought they'd wind me up with a test roster. So they've actually got a test roster that's just come in. I don't think it's live yet on the site available to bid on, but they've just got a test roster. And this is a particularly nice example because, 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 the interior is a slightly darker cream. I think it's maybe Koyo here. And this is a dark brown dash, which you can't actually see properly on my camera there. Um, but it's Koyo and dark brown, uh, Chocolato or whatever they call it. So that's a very, very nice specification. And that has just come in. So by the time this video goes out, that may well be live to bid on. So make sure you go and get in the mix. There isn't anything cooler from the 80s, I'm afraid. I'm an owner of an 80s 911, but I don't think it actually gets cooler than a Testarossa. It really doesn't. So then I'm actually here to drive this. Now, you may well be saying, TG, you've got old Porsche in the garage. Why are you tempted to bid and buy this car? You've got old Porsches, TG. This, ladies and gentlemen, is no ordinary old Porsche. Yes, it is a 1973 Porsche. However, this has gone through a comprehensive restoration and upgrade program. I've got a 60s Porsche, I've got an 80s Porsche, I've got a 2002 Porsche, but I think a 70s would fit into the garage very nicely. So this is what's referred to as a Porsche 911T Osh 05. Now that means that this car has gone through a comprehensive 
customization, restoration and upgrade program. It's not just a bit of paint and some wheels, it is a serious piece of kit. It's gone through with a company called Workshop 77 to become an OSH car. It's built to be a modern but usable classic car. The 2.4 litre flat six has been rebuilt and upgraded with a desirable Magnesium 7R crank case in it. And it's originally a United States car with a K Jetronic fuel injection system and the suspension has been reworked with KW V3s, which I can vouch for because I've got KW V3s on my 996 and they've completely transformed the car. So that engine out the back then is actually that 2.4 litre air-cooled engine upgraded with a crane cam Weber 40 IDA carburetors, a permatune ignition system and, as I said before, the Magnesium 7R crankcase. The car was originally sold in the United States and imported to the UK in February 2016, meaning it has, as I said before, the K Jetronic fuel injection system. So this car now punts out around 175 brake horsepower. Chaos. This car was actually originally finished in Tangerine when it was first built and it is now in this lovely aubergine colour. Aubergine is actually the name of the colour and not just being silly and using the excuse to put an aubergine emoji on the screen. So even the clever bits like the electronics in this car have been overhauled as well. So you'll find the fuses in this car are actually no longer those annoying old bullets which tend to go the whole time. They are now blades and even the headlights as well are modern HID varieties within the kind of the original looking housing. So it looks original but it's actually very, very clever. And inside the car then you've got all mod cons hidden within the standard OEM looking setup. Obviously you've got a Momo prototipo wheel on there, that is par for the course on these cars, but you've actually got Bluetooth and all that jazz and focal audio hi-fi in here as well, which I can vouch for sounds very good. So we're gonna go for a little hoon now, go for a little drive, I've got my filming bag there. We're gonna stick cameras all around this thing, we're gonna go for a blast, I can't actually wait. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to bear with me on the squinting front. There are no sun visors. It's a very clean aesthetic in here, but there are no sun visors. And also, it's quite loud, so I'm having to shout a little bit. Uh, but off the bat, we're having, <laughs> having a bit of fun in here. We've got a tracking car in front of us as well, so you should be able to see what on earth I'm doing, and you'll be able to see my squinting from another angle. So, first things first then, is a 2.4 litre engine mounted to this gearbox here. It's quite a strange gearbox design. This box here then, it's either got the leather removed from around it, maybe I just don't recognize what it looks like. I don't know if this is the standard box or not, uh, but it's in standard configuration. So unlike my 912, which is the same body shape as this, and I'm actually gonna be drawing some comparisons to in this video, um, it's not a dog leg box, and it's not a dog leg like my Testarossa. My goodness me, I can't see a blooming thing. What's it like to be sat in here? It is pretty much exactly the same as my 912 from 1966. It hasn't really changed in here between now and then, if it's changed at all. You've got the same five dial configuration in front of you, and it's actually better laid out than the five dial configuration in the 992. In the 992, you find yourself actually looking around the steering wheel to see the dials on the outside. In this, you actually don't have that issue. So Porsche designers in the 60s actually got a better handle of what was going on than arguably Porsche designers that did the 992 dash. So that's actually where the 992 dash configuration came from. They went back to the five dial design. You've got the time on the right hand side here. You've got your speed on this one here with the odometer, which actually on this car is only showing 1330 miles. So only 1300 miles. It's pretty much a brand new car. Obviously the big boy in the center, down to third through here, chaos. The center one then, you've got your revs and it actually revs up to about six and a half thousand RPM. You've got your oil pressure next to that and your temperature gauge next to that. And then after that, you've got your oil levels and your fuel gauge as well, which is actually just nudging near reserve. So I need to be a little bit careful. In here, it's a very nice place to be. It's quite a compact driving position, even though you have got loads and loads of room. And you do feel a little bit penned in on this side with the steering wheel, but actually on that side, there's loads and loads of room and there's a load of headroom as well. And I'm a lanky old bean, so I'm actually quite amazed there's that much space in here. 
driving as I should with my wrists on the steering wheel like that, it's a good place to be. Another thing, along with sunglasses that I should have brought with me today, was some sensible footwear. I'm actually wearing Sakai waffles once again, and I'm pretty much pressing all the pedals at the same time. Let's go down into second. Indicators actually work on this as well, which is uh, which is quite nice. Um, one thing that should be noted about this car, there are no... Is this reversed? Yes, it is. <laughs> Went into reverse very nicely there. Some of these old cars, they don't really like reverse. Want to hit something? Who knows? Um, so far, so good. So far, so good with this car. I'm very, very happy indeed. One thing that should be noted, other than the no sun visors thing, so make sure you pack some sunglasses in this car, there are no wing mirrors. No wing mirrors at all. So I'm quite used to having one wing mirror in my Testarossa, one wing mirror in my 912, but in this car, nil. Wing mirror count is zero. So uh, interesting, very interesting indeed. I'm being a car from the 70s, does it need wing mirrors? I don't know. Do you know what? I would take seat belts over wing mirrors. My 912, it has got seat belts, but they're almost like a sash. And I don't think they're actually a legal requirement uh, in the 60s. But in this, all this stuff has been redone. The interior has been completely redone. Door pulls, absolutely everything. So it actually feels a lot safer than my 912. I'm gonna give it some beans, I think, up here. I need to be a little bit careful. There is a lot of weight over the back and it's not like my 912 in that it's a very, very um, evenly balanced, relatively lightweight car with a little bit of power. That's what the 912 is all about. This has got a big fat sledgehammer in the back of it. There's a lot of weight over the back, there's a lot of power over the back, and I need to be a little bit more careful. <laughs> it sounds good though, it does sound a lot better than the 1.6 four pot that is in my 912. It's definitely got a lot more grunt. The KW V3s as well, as always, they're working their magic. They do feel so, so it feels like modern damping, modern suspension and modern handling on a classic car. It's a really nice combination. They really are just such a great upgrade. It's a testament to how good they are when you can stick them on a 996, a 964, an old boy like this, and even something like my 912, which actually is running on Coney shocks. Testarossa that it's really stressful because it's so big you're lying on the floor and like you have no idea where anything is the Testarossa is basically like an 80s Aventador with a manual dogleg box and one mirror it's almost impossible to gauge where you are this car you can see out the back of it as well nice and easy with the rear view mirror I actually don't feel stressed out not having any mirrors at all that might change if I got into London but for now it does turn in really well it's good news so price then, let's talk money. You love money on this channel, I love money anyway. These things from Workshop 77, they are around 140, 150 grand. And bear in mind, for a nut and bolt resto with something that's got all the updated tech in it, that's not that bad at all. That's pretty good value. And I suspect when this one goes live on Paddle Up, I suspect it may not even hit that. If it does, you've got a bargain, uh, but if it doesn't, then you've definitely, definitely got a bargain. What is going on here? Okay, right, I think I'm being let loose. <laughs> Bye! At this point, I think they think I've nicked it. <laughs> Have coming out of corners. So, 
One thing I don't want to do is return to paddle up having to buy this because I've wrapped it around the tree. So we're going to go nice and steady. As I say, those shoes are making my life quite difficult. electronic steering every little crease and bump you see coming in the road you feel up through the steering wheel it's just the charm of old cars it's brilliant and actually as a toy to buy and use on weekends this isn't actually that financially ruinous I don't think you've got all the rust issues dealt with you've got absolutely everything done it's nut and bolt this thing will not want for anything whatsoever. Contrary to popular belief, that 912 that I've got, even though it's not even remotely fixed yet, paintwork wise and visually, that thing's probably had 40 grand's worth of work done to it already, and it still needs paint. These things are so expensive to restore. They are an absolute nightmare. They are so financially ruinous. So if you can pick one up that's already been done, then you're just saving yourself so much aggro, so much time, and so much expense. I mean, if you think my 912, I've had it, what, two years? Let's turn around here, shall we? Let's see, let's see, maneuverability, real world testing here. Ah! Okay, that's not going according to plan. We're T-boned in the middle of a junction. too much beans and too little clutch and burn it you want to do it nice and cleanly there so as I was saying then if you can pick one of these things up that's actually been all done ready for you you're saving tens of thousands of pounds and my 912 I've had that for two years or two and a half years now and I've driven it five times it's been in and out of workshops engine rebuild floor plans doing um, interior you know you name it and these places that deal with these old cars they don't usually have fast turnaround times. It's not like a modern Porsche garage where they just say, yeah, come back next week and grab it. We're gonna plug it into a machine and swap some parts. This comprehensive metal work and nonsense that he's doing on these old things. So if you can buy one that's just out of the box, ready to enjoy, <laughs> they are literally thinking I have stolen the car now. So to give you an idea then, cost-wise on my 912 and stack it up against something like this, bearing in mind it's almost half the car this is, my 912 is about 30 grand to buy, and then it's had about 40 grand worth of work on it. Obviously I get deals and stuff because I'm a YouTube idiot, so I get better deals on things. So to say 40 grand isn't completely fair. I haven't put 40 grand of my own money in. However, you know, as a punter and someone that doesn't make relentless videos about things, it would be about 40 grand that I've spent on it already, which is, which is hell. So you're up to 70 already. Bear in mind you need to respray as well, which is gonna stand you another 10 to 20 at least. And that's not nut and bolt. You know, that 912 will not be nut and bolt by the time I'm done. Yes, I have all the structural things done. Yes, it's got new suspension, new brakes, new clutch, a rebuilt engine, we'll have paint, a full new interior, new audio system. Um, but that's by no means nut and bolt. You've still got all the fuses, the fuse boxes, a lot of the old stuff in there that just will remain and will cause you problems. So just to give you an idea of how much these things actually cost, because I don't think it fully comes across on social media or online, what a predicament these things actually get you into. Here we go. Go oh boy! Up into fifth. It is a five speed box in this car. Coming across onto the brakes. <laughs> Sounds good. It's a bit agricultural, it's a bit raw, some organic popping and banging. It's great. Oh, I love this thing. I love it. I'm going to run out of fuel. On that note, then, before I run out of fuel in the arse end of nowhere, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out all of Paddle Up's latest listings, make sure you go and hit the link in the pin comment and in the description and bookmark it head back there very regularly because there are often 
amazing bargains and some very cool quirky cars and some of the cars that are coming I can't say anything about yet but you need to see them when they land on the site some cars very close to my heart put it that way so make sure you keep that page bookmark for now then um, stay tuned as well to see whether or not I bid and win on this car as well I think it'll be live pretty shortly if it's not live already and you'll actually be able to see me in the bids potentially we'll see how much money I waste this week between now and editing it up but thank you very much for watching anyway do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all very very soon oh and also make sure you follow Paddle Up on Instagram as well because if you're really unlucky I'm going to be doing some takeovers on there with some huge stuff coming so stay tuned all right guys see you later bye